misleading graphs. They may look nice, but are they accurate? In this video, we're going to focus on circle graphs, picture graphs, and graphs that have two things plotted on the same graph. Graphs can be used to help us understand what is going on or to support a point someone is trying to make. The problem arises when people present graphs that mislead the viewer. Let's take a look at this graph I found on an article about life expectancy. It looks pretty good, right? But a graph should also convey some information. So let's take it away for a second and see if you remember what the single largest cause of death was. And the answer, of course, is heart disease. Wait, not cancer? Why does 32% look so much smaller than 31%? Well, in making the chart look three-dimensional, the farther away regions look smaller. Another reason the cancer looks so much larger is that our eyes tend to add in the sides of the cylinder to the perceived size of that section. Usually, to better understand the information, a simple pie chart would give a more accurate view. Misleading as they are, three-dimensional graphs are often used in an honest attempt to make the graph look nicer. But the way they distort perception can also easily be exploited. If you were a scientist applying for funding to research cancer treatments, or a food company trying to downplay the significance of diabetes, which graph would you want to use? If you see a graph like this, you need to ask yourself, is there a reason the presenter would want to take advantage of this distortion? So, let's make a list of the deceptive graph techniques as we go through the various examples. First on the list is having the graph distorted by making the pieces look larger or smaller than they should be. Let's take a look at another graph. Continuing on the topic of health data, we have a picture graph comparing the average life expectancy among different countries. It's basically a bar graph with colorful pictures to replace the boring bars. But the pictures make it hard to see the height of the people. Look at the beret that the Frenchman's wearing. Where is the top of him supposed to be? Let's add a vertical axis and a bar graph to get a better sense of the scale. Okay, so some of the heights are a little bit off, but that isn't our biggest problem here. We learned from the previous example to be wary of distortions in graphs. Is any of that going on? Well, yeah. Notice how Japan has about twice the life expectancy of South Africa. But it looks like it should be way more than that. That's because the picture is scaled based on the height. But what we really are perceiving is the area. When you double both dimensions in the Japanese picture, you actually quadruple the area, hence the perceived size. This sort of picture graph exaggerates the perception of different values. It can be very useful for a company that wants to demonstrate a difference between them and their competitors, making a difference seem much more dramatic. So let's add picture graphs to our list of ways that can be used to distort the information by making the images look larger or smaller than they should. So we have seen that three-dimensional graphs often distort the information, but you have to be wary of regular circle graphs also. In this graph about who's going to pay for the new stadium, it looks like the city's only paying half. But the slices on the right side, the 10, 85, and 50 million dollars respectively, are all about the same size. That doesn't make sense. In fact, if I add up the numbers on the right side of the graph, it only adds up to 145 million dollars. So by reorganizing this to scale, I realize the city is actually paying for 65% of the total cost. So in this graph, the scale is distorted since the sections in the circle graph are not proportional to the size of the wedges. A similar problem occurs when the percents do not add up to 100. Let's look at one more idea. We have a graph on U.S. life expectancy versus real gross domestic product. And we see a correlation between the money the U.S. has and the life expectancy. But that does not always mean one caused the other. In this case, we might suspect that advances in medicine have also made great strides and increased our life expectancy. You need to beware of graphs that have two different variables and different scales on the same axis. When you do that, you can actually make it appear that almost anything is correlated if you want. For example, we could compare the number of car registrations to life expectancy, but that doesn't mean an increase in the number of cars actually causes us to live longer. Let's add to our list graphs that are accurate but misleading by giving an irrelevant correlation. 
So when you're looking at a graph, be sure to be an active, critical thinker of the data that you are presented with.